Hey guys, Stephanie from Mrs. D's Corner. Sorry I'm popping in late. I was having a couple technical difficulties. Um, but welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so excited that you're here today. I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite parts of lesson planning slash my entire classroom routine. And that's the morning calendar routine that we do every single day. It never changes. It's something that I planned for once, prepped for once, and it's good to go for the entire rest of the school year. So let's get started because there's a couple of things that I wanna share with you. I'm gonna walk you through the entire routine. Maybe I can scoot you a little closer. Maybe you won't fall down. Maybe. Oh, but then you can't see the top. All right. We good to go? We're good to go. All right. This is the morning calendar that we do every single day in the classroom. When the students come in, they come in around 8 o'clock, they're getting off the bus, the para is bringing them in, they are taking their backpacks off, getting their communication notebooks out, anything that needs to come to me, if they have extra clothes, they're getting everything out of their backpacks and putting their backpacks into their cubbies. Once they do that, they're going to sit at their table and they're going to take turns using the restroom first thing in the morning. This is We do this because we're waiting for the school announcements to come on. Every morning we have announcements. Once they have announcements, uh, we stand up and do the pledge together, the national anthem together. I think we just do that on Fridays. Uh, but we do all of that together. As soon as the announcements are over, it is time for morning calendar. And it is something we do every single day. It never changes. It's very routine for all of my friends. They know what to expect. And that's what makes it so successful. So I'm going to go through it as if y'all were my students. I'm going to answer the questions though, because you're a little far away and I still really can't see you with my glasses on. So I'm just going to go through it as if y'all were my students and you'll see how the morning routine plays out. So we would start out like this. Today is, what is today? Yesterday was Wednesday, August 1st. So today is August 2nd. You would get your piece out August 2nd. Now while we're doing this, right, one of the biggest things that I noticed with my students was that sometimes they're just stand, sitting in their seat. Um, I have student desks in front of me. All of my kids have their own desks. They're sitting about right where y'all are in front of my calendar board. Each student has their own desk. So they're probably just sitting there and they're like looking around or they're like head down or not paying attention, right? Maybe I could say, repeat after me, today's August 2nd, and I could go one by one and say, okay, today's August 2nd. But I noticed that that wasn't always functional for all of my friends. It didn't mean that they were comprehending what we were doing, and I needed that reassurance from them that they were paying attention. That's when I created the calendar mats. Now, where did I put them? Okay. So I have the calendar mats here in this little magnetic pocket. I found this at Target in the dollar spot this year. It was $1. It's a magnetic pocket. It fits fall folder size things. So each of my kids is going to have their own calendar mat. All of the links for everything that you see in this video today are already linked above. You'll see them labeled and then they'll have their bit.ly. So if you're interested in something, you can simply click the link above. So the calendar mat is individualized and what it is inside, it's individualized for each student. So every student is going to have a calendar mat. I'm going to have it at the front board. Either when I say, okay, let's get ready for calendar mat. Either I'm going to grab them. Usually I staple it. I take a big piece of construction paper. I staple it onto the front um, underneath the board, make it a big pocket. Uh, this year I have this, so I'm pretty excited about that. But I just grab them out or one of the parents will grab them out put them on the tables. If they're color coded, they're color coded. Usually they're not. I didn't have them the first year I made them, um, but they're individualized. You can see this one would be for a higher level student who's working on writing. This would be for, let me see what it is, a lower level student who needs the picture identification to go along with the morning routine. So each kid is going to have their own calendar mat. Now, as I'm going through this, each kid is gonna have their own mat in front of them. My, my pairs are sitting with my students, I'm in front of my students, and as I'm doing this, they are following along on the mat. So I would say today is August, well, let me put August up here. June, April, they're not in any order. August. Today is August 2nd, 2018. Now I will have some of my higher level students, they will possibly help me do the calendar routine. 
Um, one year I had a student who was in fourth grade, almost on grade level. So he helped me and was my helper throughout the entire thing, but I was able to keep my other friends engaged and following along with their mats. So as we're going through this, my students are following through on this mat. Now you can cut out these different pieces and do it however you like. Um, you just pick out, print the pieces that you want and you make the mats work for your students, make it work for your morning routine. So I'm gonna say today is August, so the pictures match. August is a book, August is a book. So they're gonna circle, what month is it? They're gonna circle August, and I'm upside down. <laughs> okay, so today is August 2nd, the day is two. They're getting that reinforced through here and also through here. So after I say today is August 2nd, 2018, they're also gonna circle the date, okay? We're gonna reinforce that through this. So they have the visual the entire time, but now I know that they have to actually focus and pay attention. Today is August 2nd, 2018. We then go and work through the, I'm gonna leave that open, the days of the week. Now I use these magnetic pockets, they are linked above. I use these magnetic pockets to store all of my calendar pieces. I used to store them in hard ones like this, uh, but I found that these were much easier to use. They have a Velcro front, so if I ever need to take down my calendar, like at the end of every year, we have to clean off everything, I can simply just close it up and it stays in where it belongs. If I wanted to put this on a bulletin board, I have stapled those pockets through the back side onto the bulletin board. So they're very sturdy, very good quality. I've had those for about three years now. But these are the um, days of the week. So we're gonna go through and we would start with today is. So today is, today's Thursday. Had to check. Today's Thursday. So today was Thursday. Now kids are doing this on their mats. So today is Thursday. Okay, again, the pictures match. If they're writing it, here's their visual to help them spell it. Today is Thursday. What was yesterday? Yesterday was Wednesday. So again, they're gonna be circling that on their mats to follow along. Tomorrow will be Friday. Immediate feedback, Friday. They know, because I'm paying attention, as I put it up, I'm coming and sweeping the front. My para is also sweeping the back behind them to help any of my students who maybe need help hand over hand circling things and making sure kids aren't scribbling or dabbing the marker on the table. We've all been there. So we're gonna go through the date. We're gonna do the calendar. We're also gonna do days of the week. Then we're gonna move into the temperature and today's weather. Usually for the temperature, I have a higher level student get on the computer. So as soon as this child comes in, they're going to put all their things away. They'll use the restroom first, or I know that they can independently use it on their own quickly. So they'll go get on the computer, start all the computers up for me, so that's kind of their job. Turn all of the classroom computers on for me, and then I create a shortcut on the desktop to like weather bug or AccuWeather or local weather. And they go look for the number, and what's cool about these, this one is a Velcro one, but if you didn't want to Velcro it, you could simply just write, um, I don't have the temperature on my watch, but you could write the temperature is 80 degrees. Okay? And then your students can either write that, or if you wanted to use the pictures, I have hot, cool, cold, and warm. 80 degrees is hot. So I would go ahead and put this on there, and then on their temperature gauge on here, again, it looks just the same. They're gonna circle hot. We're gonna go through the weather today is. Well, here in Atlanta, the weather today is rainy. So I need to find rainy. Now these pictures are larger. Summer, sunny, snowy, stormy. It is pretty stormy, so I'm gonna go with stormy. It's actually pretty nice right now. It stopped raining for a little bit, but and then we would go into the season. The season is summer. Now I go right up into the day of the season. So when winter comes in, it might be, um, so it's what, December and March. So March, the kids are already thinking, like by March 21st, they're like, it's spring. And I'm like, sorry guys, it's still winter. Until the day that the solstice hits or the equinox or whatever it is, hits till that day that this, the, the season changes, we are doing the accurate season, okay? I'm teaching my kids that. <laughs> so it is summer. Even though kids are coming back and maybe in their brains they're like, it's not summer, we're back in school, but it's not. It's still summer till September um, 21st. So we're still going through all of that. 
They're also going to be circling the weather in their calendar map. Again, you have stormy in here, and then the season is summer. Okay, so they are doing this as we are doing the calendar together. When we are finished doing the calendar routine together, that doesn't mean that our routine is finished. I grab a magic eraser. I get these in bulk at Walmart. You can get a pack of them like for eight bucks for a couple of them or two in a pack for like three bucks. Um, and I have them erase. They need to erase their folders every day because this teaches them to put things back and it also teaches them um, fine motor, they're working on fine motor to really get in and erase all of the marks that they put into their, their folder mat, especially for this one. So then after that, we're gonna put them all back. And now it's the stu student's turn to go get their, their calendar binder. So after we do this all together, it is time for us to do our morning work binder. Each one of my students has their own morning work binder. It is very individualized. They're all the same thing, but I'm gonna show you what individualized, how I mean that, what it looks like. So as I'm putting these back, I'm saying, okay, Stephanie, go get your calendar, or go get your binder. That's what I call it, their binder. What I put them in is, um, this is one of the new bins from Target. I've shared it here in the group. Uh, but usually I just use a big plastic bin. All of the binders are in it. My kids, they're color coded. I use white binders, so they're all the same. And each of my kids has their own cover on the front that is color coded to match their color. So they can independently go walk across the room. I purposefully put them across the room so they have to get up out of their seat and do a little bit of movement. They go up across the seat, go pick up their binder, and then they come back to their seat at the front. And we all do our binders all together. So as we're working through our binder, we're all gonna start with our first name. Now for some of our students, um, this is what it looks like, I can spell my name. It's going to be as simple as uh, matching letters. So this, for me, for my students, would be one of the lowest levels of matching their, their name, spelling their name. I'm gonna take my glasses off because I'm close now. So I just wrote in this with Sharpie. You can take the magic eraser and erase letters as they begin to master this skill. But if they know how to spell their name, they're just gonna go through and spell their name. Now students are working through this at their own pace. Put P upside down, okay? So if it takes one student six minutes to do their name and another student to do one minute to do their name, that's how long it takes. In the beginning of the school year, it takes a little bit longer. Through the end of the school year, usually within two or three months, we're getting really quick and I'm starting to add in some differentiation for their name and for all the other skills. By differentiation, I mean I might erase this and have them spell it on their own. I might erase the first couple of letters and have them spell it on their own. They're not gonna have this exact page all school year because they should be progressing on that goal, right? They shouldn't need the model at the top to learn how to spell their name. So they're not just matching, they need to actually learn how to spell their name. They can also write their name. Now this could be as simple as I'll write it once and then you write it twice, okay? So differentiating. Some of my students, if they've mastered doing their first name and they're getting really, really fast at working through their binders, I'll go through and put their last name in here because it is, it is important for them to learn how to spell their last name. So I don't start with the last name, I just start with the first name, but I wanted to show you that I have this page in here for differentiation for my kids who are working through their morning binders really, really fast and maybe need another page or two to do so that my other students can work through their binders and we're all kind of finished at the same time. So again, you don't have to put the model up here. You can have them spell their own last name. So my last name is Delussy, one Miss D. People have a really hard time pronouncing my last name, so that's why I'm Miss D. Miss Delussy, Mrs. Delussy. Again, you can have, um, have them write their last name. There's also a page for students to spell their full name. So I've noticed that with some of my students, they could spell their first name, they could spell their last name, they could do it great. But then when you tried to put them together and have them do it all at once, they were like, huh. So I put this page in there once they've worked with their first name and last name a couple of times, and then they can do their full name. And you can also do put the page I can write my full name. So then we're also gonna be working on our phone number. So this is where I put the parent's phone number um, and they work through the phone number. So they're gonna put it in here. Maybe, I didn't put three. I'm missing a number, that's why. 
Okay, so pretend that I have all my numbers filled in. After they put them in in correct order, now most times I do have to put like one, two, three at the top to fill in so that they know. They're gonna go through and, and dial their parents' phone number on this fake phone here. So one, two, three, four, five, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Pretend we have the three, okay? So we're gonna work through that. Notice none of these pages here have anything on the back because it makes it hard when they're working through their binders to flip up a page, work up here, and then work down here. I only put them on the front side of the page. Then we're gonna work on our house, their address, 123 School Street, that's my address, y'all, Atlanta, Georgia. Okay, so this is gonna be their specific address. Then we're gonna work on their birthday, January 25th, 1988. There's also a page in there to work on. I know how old I am. I know what grade I'm in, all that fun stuff. Now, remember how I just said these pages don't have anything on the backs. This is one of the only pages, I think it's the only page, that actually has stuff on the back. Now it's just for storage. I put four lines of Velcro here to store all of these pieces. So they would go through and use the calendar on the front board and remodel that on their calendar here. Now all of these pieces are here simply because this is my sample binder, but they would go through and put the month is August, the date is August 2nd, and every day, if it's August 18th, they're counting to 18, so they're practicing counting at the same time. I can write the month. I can spell the month. So every student does this, they're spelling the month. At the end of the month, when it's the last day of August that my kids are gonna need to spell August, I'm gonna pull out, I use, I store all of the extra pieces in bead dividers, and I've shared the picture here in the group before. I will reshare the picture um, in the comments in this video afterwards so you can see exactly what I use. I have one binder gets one bead divider, and that's where I store all of the extra pieces. So all of the extra months are already cut out. All I have to do is pull out bead dividers, put August in one slot, and pull September out, which I actually have here, and just swap them out so it's ready to go the very next day. I don't do this while students are in school. I do this after I put them on the bus because we have time after school to do it, or if I come in early, I'll do it in the morning. My kids don't ever see me switching that out. Um, for whatever reason, I put that one on the back there. We also work on days of the week, so they are spelling the days of the week. I'm actually having my kids write this. So they are using the model that's up here on the calendar to help them practice spelling all of these different days of the week. They're doing it every day. What do we have? Then we're gonna do today was, yesterday, tomorrow is. Same thing, today is Thursday. I always start with today is. A lot of my kids wanna start here, but I wanna give them that frame of reference that today is. Yesterday was Wednesday, tomorrow will be Friday. And I always keep them in order here. If my kids are doing it really fast, um, then I might mix them up for them. Again, I have that, see I have that page printed a couple of times. Um, I can write the day of the week. I can trace the days of the week. If you need an activity to put in here to give uh, some extra time to your students who work through the binders at a slower speed than others, you can put extra pages in. We're also doing the weather. So I said today was rainy, it was stormy. Um, this is to graph for the month. So today, yesterday was rainy. Today is also rainy. So they would have two spots here and they don't erase this part until the end of the month rainy. So they would have two spots for rainy on their on their graph. That way at the end of the month we can look through and see what we had the most of that day, of that month. Having too many pieces. I also have them work on the season and then the clothes that they can wear in that season. Now for the calendar, there are pieces that go along with this. Um, that you could easily do. I don't put it on my calendar board, but there are many pieces within the set that I don't have up there on the board. We also have this thermometer, and that's all we work on in our morning binders. Now, before they close it and they're like, I'm done, I'm like, ha ha, no you're not. They get a dry erase, or mark, not a marker, they get this Mr. Sketch, or Mr. Sketch, not Mr. Sketch, Ma Mr., who is it? Magic Eraser. Mr. Clean. I always get them too mixed up. And they have to go through and erase all of the pieces that they wrote on all of the pages. Now I only think I wrote on one. That way their binder 
is clean for the next day. They are also the ones who are going to go through and reset their binders for the next day. This is part of our morning routine. They have to mix it up when they put it back and they have to go through each page. Put all your pieces back. And we teach them to do this by using the phrase put back. That's all we use, put back. Flip the page, erase. Flip the page, put back. Flip the page, put back. Put it out of order. And if they need help doing it, we will certainly help them. But for the most part, we want them to be independent of this. Now that the address ones, we put sideways because there's not enough space, but put back. Put back. Okay, so they're gonna go through their whole binder. When they're finished with their binder and it's been checked by either myself or one of my paras, they go put it back in the bin. Go put your binder away. Binder bin is in the same spot. It's always in every single school day of the year. They never have to look for it because it's always in the same place. They don't have to put it in their desk or anything because I want them to get up and move. That's the purpose of having a bin. I don't want them to keep it in their desk. It bunches up their desk and they have other stuff in there. So after they finish this, they have one more thing to do and it is the freebie that is linked above. It's the days of the week writing freebie or paste, cut and paste freebie. It comes with a bunch of different options for you to use in your classroom. Now, they, after they put their binder away, they come back, push their chairs in, and they go to the bath table. At this point, I'm the one, whenever the first student is finished, I'm the one who goes to the bath table. I have a file folder for Monday, a file folder for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I pull as many as I need out for that day, so today is Thursday. So I would grab this page, and I'm also going to grab, let me find Thursday. I printed all of them. Thursday. So they're gonna have these two pages to do. Now, for the most part, most of my kids just do this one. If I have a higher level student or somebody who's working through it really fast, I give them this one so that other students can catch up. See, I'm planning extra so that none of my students are just sitting around waiting. So what they do, now you can laminate these and do Velcro if you have a student who is not quite ready to work on scissor skills or gluing skills or any of those skills, maybe they're not quite there, you can do the Velcro task. They have to cut it out. I will take a marker sometimes and highlight the boxes for them. This blue is not gonna be a good one. Um, but I'll highlight the boxes for them. If we have to hand over hand cut, I will help them cut. Um, but this is for them to spell the day of the week every single week, right? Every single day of the week. And then they go through this one and then they're gonna just, the first one is coloring it in so they can get crayons or markers. Then they're gonna trace it, box it in so they have to rewrite it. This one really confuses my kids, I should really change it. And then they write, and then they have to find all of Thursdays in the box. When they're finished, they take this, put it in their mailbox, and usually by that time it's ready to go to specials. If they don't finish all of their work before they go to specials, then before they can get on an iPad, so we do morning work specials, that's when I have my planning time. They come back, we do ELA, so reading in ELA. And by that the end of that block, we are ready to go to lunch. We have a very early lunch, 1020. So we go to lunch, they go out to recess right after that, we come back, my paras have lunch duty and their own lunches. So that is when we do computer time and we do motor lab slash sensory. That is so that my students are still having the academic time that they need and the play time that they need. Um, but I don't have as many hands on deck, so it's not something, not a time of the day when I can certainly do an ELA block, whole group or small group and work individually. So that is the time before they get on a computer and my students know and they learn if you don't finish your morning work, even if you're still stuck on putting put back in your binders, you still have to come back and finish this before you can get on a tablet and do your fun stuff. So that's how we do our morning routine. It's the same exact thing every single day which is really great for my kids. The calendar mats are fantastic because it holds them accountable for the work that they're doing in the morning. And it really starts the day off on a good foot. They're here to work and um, it's very, very beneficial for them. So I haven't been able to answer 
all of your questions throughout this because I can't, I can see them from here, but I haven't been able to answer them throughout. So I will go back after this live and answer all of your questions um, one by one. If you have any questions, if you're watching the replay, please leave a comment, tag me, let me know what questions you have or reach out. I'm happy to help. I'm happy to help you get this set up in your classroom. If you want to read more about this, you can click the link above for the blog post. Again, anything you've seen today, I've already linked above for you. And if you wanted to grab any of the resources on TPT, don't forget that today is the last day of the Teachers Pay Teacher Sale. And you can save 25% on all of this. So that's a great time to get your calendar set up and ready to go. It's a great thing for you to get set up over summer because you only have to set it up once and then you're good to go for the rest of the year. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.